Hello and welcome to the April 2022 episode of My Pip Monthly. My name is Amber Rouse Holloway and I'm a partner here at our Troy office. Our April 2022 topics include, of course, a case law update. First, we'll discuss the case of Mull v. Citizens Insurance Company of the Midwest. It's an unpublished opinion that was issued February 17th, 2022. And then we'll move on to Ye v. AAA Insurance. Um, this is also an unpublished opinion that was issued on February 24th, 2022. Then we'll move on to trending topics in PIP litigation. And I wanted to discuss utilization reviews and motions for summary disposition and how to get a case disposed of when you have a utilization review, or at least one way. First up, Mulvey Citizens Insurance Company of the Midwest. Again, this is an unpublished opinion that was issued on February 17, 2022. Here, the Michigan Court of Appeals reversed and remanded the trial court's order, denying summary disposition in favor of the plaintiff. Plaintiff, on the other hand, argued that there were genuine issues of material fact as to whether plaintiff knowingly drove a motorcycle without the owner's permission. Ultimately, the Court of Appeals found that there was no genuine issue of material fact and that plaintiff use of the motorcycle was indeed unauthorized as he did not have permission from his girlfriend to use the motorcycle. I did want to give a quick background. In this case, plaintiff sustained injuries when he was involved in a motor vehicle accident while driving a motorcycle owned by his girlfriend. Her name was Melissa Dulce. Uh, Plaintiff then sued Citizens Insurance Company seeking PIP benefits. Defendant moved for summary disposition, arguing that plaintiff was not entitled to no-fault benefits as he was willingly operating the motorcycle without Ms. Dulce's permission. The trial court initially, well, denied defendant's motion for summary disposition, finding that there was a question of fact as to whether plaintiff had permission to operate the motorcycle and the judge directed the parties to conduct discovery as to um, whether a question of fact actually existed. After the close of discovery, defendant filed its renewed motion for summary disposition. Plaintiff argued again that there were no genuine issues of material fact, whether plaintiff knowingly drove the motorcycle without permission. Again, the trial court denied defendant's motion and the Court of Appeals applied MCL 500-3113A, which states that a person is not entitled to be paid PIP benefits for accidental injury if at the time of the accident, the person was using a motor vehicle or a motorcycle, which he or she had taken unlawfully and the person knew or should have known that the motorcycle was taken unlawfully. Uh, The Supreme Court concluded that the plain meaning of the phrase taken unlawfully readily embraces a situation in which an individual gains possession of a vehicle contrary to Michigan law. Defendant argued that the plaintiff took his girlfriend's vehicle unlawfully under the terms of the joyriding status. Defendant went on to argue that there was no genuine issues of material fact that plaintiff's use of his girlfriend's vehicle was unauthorized as plaintiff did not receive permission from his girlfriend to use the motorcycle. During his deposition, plaintiff testified that his girlfriend would not allow him to use the motorcycle even if he asked her. Further, during a recorded interview, plaintiff was asked if his girlfriend keeps the motorcycle at her residence or if plaintiff takes the motorcycle. Plaintiff stated that she keeps the motorcycle at her residence and he took it like he was a bad boy. And he further stated that he was not supposed to take it. When asked if the motorcycle was stolen, plaintiff responded, no, no, taken. It was taken without her knowledge or permission. Given these facts, ultimately the Court of Appeals reversed and remanded for entry of an order granting defendant's motion for a summary disposition. Next up, we have the case of Yee v. AAA Insurance. This is also an unpublished opinion. It was issued February 24th, 2022. In this case, the Court of Appeals reversed the trial court's decision and held that pursuant to a provision found in plaintiff's insurance policy, there was no UIM coverage because plaintiff's husband owned the vehicle and resided with her. The court remanded to the trial court for entry of judgment as to plaintiff's UIM claim in favor of defendant. This case looked upon whether a plaintiff is excluded from seeking UIM coverage under a AAA policy excluded to plaintiff and her husband that provided UIM for her 2003 Honda and her husband's 2013 Ford Escape. The trial court reasoned that the policy excludes UIM coverage for motor vehicles owned by a policy hoarder 
policyholder or residence of a policyholder's household. It was undisputed in the case that plaintiff resided with her husband and that her husband owned the subject motor vehicle that he insured, but the exclusionary provision in the policy precluded her husband's Ford from qualifying as an underinsured motor vehicle, and thus she cannot claim UIM benefits. So here we have a case of the husband getting into a motor vehicle accident and trying to claim uninsured or underinsured motorist coverage from another policy in the household. By way of background, the Yee case action arises out of a motor vehicle accident that occurred in July of 2018 when the plaintiff was injured as a passenger in her husband's Ford, 2013 Ford that is. The plaintiff filed a negligence claim against her husband which resulted in the settlement for $20,000. The settlement was finalized pursuant to the AAA policy they shared under which the maximum policy limits of $250,000 was reduced due to the relationship between the parties. The plaintiff then sought UIM benefits from defendant by claiming that her husband is underinsured because the damages exceeded the bodily injury limits of $20,000, which they settled for earlier. Defendant informed plaintiff that the policy offers her no coverage for underinsured motorist benefits which led to plaintiff filing this action. In the case of Dawson v. Farm Bureau, um, it's a seminal case that we use, typically use in, in situations like these UIM slash UM claims. Um, the Michigan Court of Appeals held that courts must construe and, imply, and apply the unambiguous contra contractual provisions as written in the policy of insurance when determining whether UM or UIM coverage is available, since such benefits are not mandatory under Michigan law. These benefits are held to contract principles only, and thus the policy controls as the policy is the contract. Ultimately, the trial court denied defendant's motion for summary disposition and held that there was a question of fact as to whether coverage exists in light of two UIM provisions. The trial court entered a stipulated judgment in favor of the plaintiff in the amount of $230,000. Uh, the trial court then stayed executing said judgment until defendant exhausted all of the appellate remedies. It's important to note that the provisions in the AAA policy stated that an underinsured motor vehicle means a vehicle whose ownership, maintenance, or use has resulted in bodily injury of a person and for which the sum of limits of liability under all bodily injury liability insurance policies, bonds, or other security required to be maintained under law applicable to the driver or to the person or organization legally responsible for such vehicle and applicable to the vehicle is less than the limits of the underinsured motorist co coverage provided to the insured person at the time of the act. That essentially states that you must exhaust all other policies. And then the policy, more importantly to this, this case, the policy also went on to state that uninsured motor vehicle and underinsured motor vehicle does not include any motor vehicle which is owned by you or any resident of your household. So just by that statement alone or that provision of the policy alone, um, the parties in this situation were married, they lived together, and the husband owned the other vehicle. Ultimately, the Court of Appeals followed the contractual language of the policy and said that the exclusionary provision in the policy precluded her husband's Ford from qualifying as an underinsured motor vehicle and thus plaintiff cannot claim UIM benefit. And moving on to the trending topics and PIP litigation, I wanted to discuss utilization reviews and motions for summary disposition. We all know that no fault reform happened in June of 2019, but a part of no fault um, reform included the enactment of MCL 500-3157A, which enabled NOFA insurers to conduct utilization reviews of a medical provider's charges. And these utilization reviews typically include a determination as to the appropriateness in terms of both the level and quality of treatment, products, services, and accommodations provided under the chapter and uh, uh, regarding medically accepted standards. Under NOFA reform, the Department of Insurance and Financial Services was instructed to establish criteria or standards for utilization reviews that identify utilization of treatment products, services, or accommodations under the chapter above the usual range of utilization for treatments, products, services, or accommodations. On December 18, 2020, DIFFS, or the Department of Insurance and Financial Services, 
enacted the utilization review rules, which became a part of the administrative, Michigan Administrative Code. Um, so typically what a utilization review does, um, it allows the defendant to determine through the review of the medical records and bills um, that a provider overutilized treatment. Um, an overutilized treatment could mean that the treatment, the amount charged for treatment was excessive, the uh, type of treatment was excessive, um, the type of treatment was unnecessary, things of that nature. So due to that, defendant would then advise the provider that it would no longer be providing reimbursement for the services at issue due to the utilization review and the outcome of the utilization review. And then the Michigan Administrative Code R564 Section 3 provides that an insurer's denial of a provider's services on the basis that the provider overutilized or otherwise rendered inappropriate treatment is a determination from which the provider may appeal to DIFFS. The code also goes on to state that a provider may appeal a determination made by an insurer within 90 days of the date of the disputed determination and the same must be made on a form prescribed by DIFFS. So here, after the utilization review and after the insurer denies benefits because of the utilization review, the provider has a, a way to get around this. They can appeal it to DIFFS as a form that is prescribed that they can fill out and submit. But if a provider fails to appeal, the provider did not act in accordance with Michigan Administrative Code regarding the utilization reviews. Further, if a provider did, did appeal the defendant's determination with DIFFS, any decision issued by DIFFS would be subject to judicial review under the Michigan Administrative Procedures Act. So now we're looking at a case where we have this utilization review conducted. It says that the provider overutilized treatment for whatever reason, and then the provider does not appeal. If a provider does not appeal to get this case dismissed, we can look to see, or we can use the administrative scheme or that the, the fact that the provider did not exhaust the administrative scheme as required by the case law I have listed here, Citizens for Common Sense in Government, the Attorney General, and there's also more case law, Pappas v. Michigan Gaming Control, that says that a provider must exhaust these administrative procedures. Again, if a provider fails to exhaust its administrative remedy through DIFFS, the court does not have subject matter warranting a dismissal under MCR 2116C4. Further, if a provider fails to appeal the utilization review determination, there's no genuine issue of material fact that the services are not overdue and therefore a plaintiff does not have standing to maintain the cause of action and otherwise fail to state a claim upon which relief can be granted. And that's a motion under C-10 and a motion under C-8. So like I said, if that situation exists, you get this utilization review, it comes back that the provider overutilized services, and then the provider does not um, go through these administrative opportunities that are provided under the Michigan law, then you have this opportunity to dispose of the case due to the same. And this is a, a fairly new way to dispose of the case. We've had some luck here with these types of motions. But like I said, it is new. It's an evolving law. These utilization reviews are becoming more and more common due to no fault reform. So I would invite you to give me a call or email if you have any questions regarding these issues. Again, my name is Amber Rouse Holloway and I would like to thank you for attending the April 2022 episode of My Fifth Monthly. Thank you.